Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a redo of the Touch the Sky video because there's a lot of stuff that I didn't talk about originally or explain very well or I just didn't know what I was talking about because I hadn't played the heist much. Um, so start off exactly the same, just mask up straight away, go up the stairs, break the vent. Uh, there's a few different ways in through here. You can go down the bottom way and then go through one of the events if you want, but I still prefer to do this way. Um... I find it a little bit easier because it takes you closer to this woman who you can just grab and then immediately throw into the bathroom. Uh, so the main thing that I didn't talk about much last time were the guard paths because there are basically three distinct guards on this difficulty anyway that patrol the upstairs in very different ways. Uh, you have this guard who stands here and looks this way I think. Uh, he stands outside that door, then he walks over here and stands next to the elevator. Um, after standing next to the elevator, he will walk all the way over here and look out this window, and then he will walk into this room, admire this uh, giant face, and then he will walk back out this door and stand over there again. This guard always has the blue key card. This guy always has it, and this guy spawn. This guy is basically the office guard, from what I can tell. Uh, because he spends most of his time standing right here, looking this way, and he also stands on this balcony here and looks over the edge. He will walk over that way and then stare down this hallway, but other than that, he is. But he spends most of his time on this side of the uh, upper floor. This guard, uh, I would honestly recommend just killing him. Um, I would actually recommend just killing two of the guards on this floor in general because they're really fucking annoying. Uh, hello? Yeah. And you spend most of the heist on this floor anyway. Um, especially if you have the upstairs filing room. Uh, that room there can be the filing room. Right now it's the security room as you can tell by the blue card. But uh, you don't really need to take out the cameras on this map to be honest because you can just loop that camera and loop the camera up there as well and that will basically cover everything that you need. Um, that camera can see you down this hallway, or that hallway, like down the other side. So make sure you don't kill any guards that way unless you've looped that camera and the other one there. Um, but if you're not really killing guards in that hallway, you can just loop these two and you'll pretty much be fine. Uh, you need to start the hack to start doing Wi-Fi circles, and then you get to around two and a half minutes to around four minutes into the heist. The um, lead guard will walk up these stairs. Uh, you can stand here and just kind of ping through it when you start getting like close to the sort of time period like there we go guard. Watch the guard. Guard. then you can hack his phone from there you can slide from up here by the way because it's technically a private area and nobody will hear it just like that and then you can get back through the saw i'm also going to hack his radio real quick so i can place a camera on him this is the league guard by the way just in case you can't tell by the uh, mod that i have on he does have giant radios on his back, that's the only indication. Um, yeah, so that should finish pretty soon. But you don't need to keep the door open to hack him, by the way. Uh, so now it's time to do Wi-Fi circles, because this game loves Wi-Fi circles. Uh, I would say just do these in whatever order is like logical, realistically. like. If the filing room is over there, you can leave that circle there for like one of the last ones you do because it's right next to the filing room. Okay? I fucked that up. That's fine, we're going into search now. Um, because for some reason, if a guard has a pager that you would need to answer and you throw them like that, uh, the pager is cancelled. I don't know why. This is going to be a bit more difficult because of that, but it's fine. If you want a non-search version of uh, this video, then uh, watch the original video, I guess. So yeah, the lead guard's path does change at a couple points in this heist. Um, after you open the bedroom, his path changes to include... What the fuck? Uh, his path changes to include the bedroom. He has a couple different ways of walking into the bedroom. He can walk around the left side of the bed or the right side of the bed. I'll explain more when we get to that point. 
Also, these are some of the poison spawns. Poison can spawn right here. It can also spawn in the bathroom over here. Right here. Uh, another place that a poison can spawn is in this bedroom, or this uh, bathroom that I was throwing these people into earlier. Um, this one seems quite rare, but it can spawn in this room as well. So reaching this bottom filing room can be kind of scary and a bit difficult because of how awkward this whole downstairs area is, but typically I find going through the kitchen there to be kind of okay, and then you can go through this stall here. Um, be careful around going around this side of these kind of trees because if you haven't killed the guard that looks out the window, he can look down and see you. The only way to avoid that guard seeing you is to stay close to the wall like this. Um, also, if when you go into this hallway here, be very, very careful because there can be a guard just standing here and looking down this hallway. Um, you can still see the outline of key cards through uh, the drawers like that. That might get patched in the future, I have no clue if it will. If it does, then just, I guess, go for all the draws. Uh, make sure you start at the bottom draws and work your way up, because otherwise the uh, like draws will cover up the keycard and it makes grabbing it really awkward. Uh, so now we have the keycard done and the Wi-Fi circles done. We have a few choices where I'm going to go. I'm going to go do Office first. Uh... So the office can be a place that the lead guard walks through as well after you've opened it. He can walk through this door and then stand right here, stare at the panic room, then turn around and leave. Uh, he can walk through this door and then like walk all the way around the room like this and then just leave straight away. He won't stand in. He won't stay in the room. He'll just walk through the room. He can also walk through this door and also just walk through the room. So. There are three different paths you can take through this room. Um, and the same is true for the bedroom as well. He has two different paths you can take through the bedroom. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, so in the bedroom, he can walk into the bedroom and then walk around this side of the bedroom, walk around the side of the bed rather, stand here, stare at the panic room. He can also walk around this side of the bedroom and then stand here and stare at the vault. I call it a panic room as a vault. Um, also, the delivery guy, who should be on the way now. Uh, when he arrives, the door is opened like that. Uh, if you want to be able to close this door, the front door, you need to make sure that you um, unlock and open the door before the delivery guy arrives. Because once the delivery guy arrives, the door is forced open and it cannot be shut again. So if you want to be able to shut the door, you need to have the door already open. The only way to do that is to jump down to it and then unlock it. Once you get the poison done, it's just a case of leaving. This guy will stand in this room after you've opened this. He also has a fake VIP invitation on him. If you're playing online, then someone who isn't masked up can grab that and it allows them to stand in these private areas without being uh, detected by guards, just like in Rock the Cradle. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a shared item like it is in Rock the Cradle, so it only affects the person who actually grabs it. Once you do the poison and ring the bell, and remember to ring the bell, uh, you just need to wait in this bathroom. So I would recommend closing the door before grabbing him, especially if you're in search, because a guard might just randomly see you doing it, which is not how I failed a run. Absolutely not. Okay, so once Mason gets in here, you can immediately fail, because apparently a guard was standing halfway staring through the door for some reason. Cool. Um, 
once you get missing, getting up these stairs is a nightmare sometimes. But there's nobody here. Basically, just see what I just said. Just kind of edge your way up the stairs. Make sure that camera's not looking. Make sure there isn't a the guards to there. Um, if you have killed, if you haven't killed any of the guards upstairs yet, um, make sure obviously there isn't the guard standing there. Make sure there isn't a guard walking down that hallway towards you. Just be very careful, obviously. Um, the problem now is I am in search, it's a card. and I need to do stuff with Mason. Um, so. If you're not in search, you can pretty safely just throw Mason into this corner. However, if you're in search, there is a chance that guards will just wander into the panic room. <laughs> and if that happens, they see him and they call the alarm. So, um, good luck, I guess. Uh, I didn't write down the codes they were on the whiteboard but I, I, this is a failed run so i already knew what i already know what the code is i think yep uh and then just open this and make sure while you're entering the code by the way that the lead guard doesn't walk in right next to you because that can happen and it's really really sad it's a really sad way to lose a run it's just having the lead guard walk next to you while you're opening the thing so my digits, uh, one, four, eight, oh. Uh, make sure you look at this from the side, by the way, because the six can be really hard to see if you're looking head on it and it's got like fingerprints on it. Um, it's really difficult to see for some reason, so it's easier to look at it from the side like this. Um, so is it one, four, eight, uh, that's, uh, one, eight, four. Well, there are a couple ways of getting all of these bags out in self if you really want to. Um, in the current version of the game at least, extra loot bags aren't really worth the time or effort it takes to get them. Especially with the game being so completion heavy right now in terms of like the challenges wanting you to uh, complete heists rather than get bags. Um, so there isn't really much point in getting these on any, like bonus bags on any heist realistically. Um, but if you want to get these, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, you can use the vents. So you can use this vent here. And just throw bags into it like that. Uh, you can also... I guess I'll use the other bags from the panic room actually instead of going over that side because that's further away. I'm gonna use that then. Oh god, am I gonna have to spend my entire time babysitting this now? Okay, it doesn't actually progress while it's being interrupted which is interesting. But yeah, if you want to throw bags through this particular vent, um, make sure you get a good fr uh, like a good run up on it. Because if you don't, it won't go deep enough and it'll, if it lands like quite close to the front, guards will be able to see the bag and then they'll call in a search. Um, if you're already in search, the best way to do it is probably just to throw all the bags down to the bottom down there. Because then you'd have to move them that far. Or if you don't care about going into search and you're already at the end of the heist, just throw all the bags down and it shouldn't matter too much. Like that. Just throw the bags down like that. Once the SSC is done, you are actually just finished. That is the whole house. There's a guard. Make sure there's nobody here. If you are not in search, you can use that alert to move the dog out. Um otherwise just leave. Like I said, if you have the extra bags, you can do that. Uh, I would probably at this point change the cameras you've looped um, to be that one and that one probably. Just so you have a bit of a safer time moving bags if you're throwing the bags down there. But uh, once you're done, let me go into the elevator. That's it. Nice and simple. Hopefully this video had a bit more information on certain things that I... Uh, skimped on last time. 
Uh, otherwise... Yeah. Uh, I think I might have forgotten to mention a couple of things, but you can also go back and rewatch the first video, uh, because anything that I didn't mention in this, I probably did mention in that one. This one was kind of just more of an addendum to correct a few things that I got wrong, or add a bit more information for particular things that I didn't know about at the time. Uh, mostly for my peace of mind more than anything, so that I know the, um, that I've, I've listed everything that's important. Um, I don't know what I still do after this, or if I'll do any more of these, I might. I'm not sure. I think most of you are self heist in this game are pretty straightforward and simple. Um, don't really need anything like complex for them. I'll be right. I think. Um, I'm gonna go now. 